Hello and welcome to another episode of Monday Markets. Thank you for your support on the channel. And also just as a quick housekeeping note, there's a new video on the Crypto Cred channel that talks about uh, spikes, reversals, SFPs, deviations, all those types of uh, setups and trade ideas. So if you like those, uh, go check out that video and yeah, let me know what you think. As far as BTC USD goes, 12 days left on this monthly. I would say the 12 day number is slightly deceiving because as we go into Christmas and New Year, a lot of volume and liquidity is gonna be drying up anyway. So perhaps the close itself won't be as instructive. Uh, as you'll recall, the monthly time frame just isn't at any important levels yet. Uh, the 20K reclaim would be important. Uh, 14 to 12K monthly support would be important and the market's neither here nor there. So in terms of monthly or even weekly swing strategy, there isn't a whole lot going on. If we were to assess the price action that we have in front of us on the monthly, um, we basically have continuation from last month's directional bias. You'll recall that that previous month closed as a bearish engulfing, which we spoke about on one of these streams, where it spiked above previous month's high and closed above previous month's low. That's a bearish engulfing. And lo and behold, it found resistance at that previous month's low. Or even if you take the deepest swing point of the you know big down candle, uh, it, no matter how you slice it, the, this looks like a breakdown and an underside retest of the range low. So nothing bullish on the monthly time frame uh, at the time of recording. Again, the earliest is either on a reclaim of 20K or deeper into support, but this in its, uh, on its own just looks like uh, the monthly bias is acting strongly on the market. As far as the weekly goes, uh, unsurprisingly, it's basically the same view uh, as on the monthly. Uh, the earliest that the weekly time frame could be bullish would be a reclaim of the breakdown at sort of 19K or thereabouts, because then if you imagine the market, you know, on the weekly time frame closing above this area, you get some sort of high time frame close. And then you can make an argument that this was support, this is the deviation, and now that support's being reestablished, we can take longs with our invalidation either at the low or on some kind of thrust candle stop and sort of target whatever, the highs of the consolidation. So we'd want to see evidence of a failed breakdown, and at the moment there is no such evidence. Uh, another thing you can look at potentially is a weekly shift in market structure. So at the moment you have low, high, lower low, lower high, lower low, I mean this is kind of the same low but whatever, lower high, lower low, and this kind of looks like a lower high, even though it's just a big ugly wick. But in any case, there are no weekly higher highs being made. So if the market were to offer that in the form of breaking this area of weekly structure at 20K and thus forming a higher high, then we can say, okay, that's a weekly shift in market structure. That's worth taking seriously. Let's go fishing for uh, dips. And that can be either just a consolidation after the higher high. It could be a deeper pullback into the breakdown level that gives us a better invalidation. But in any case, we would have that on our side. But at the moment, we have neither the failed breakdown nor the bullish weekly market structure. And we don't have any key contextual support resistance levels going on at 16.5k either. So the weekly time frame are definitely still lacking. Again, the conditions for that to change are rather self-evident. Reclaim, good. Market structure break, good. We don't have that. So uh, we're still waiting. I suppose. Um, in the grand scheme of things, this weekly wick, I mean, it just kind of on its face looks ugly. I don't think you need to make it any more complicated than that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not technically a bearish engulfing on the weekly time frame, given it closed above previous week's low, but it's not a good weekly nonetheless. I don't want to read too much on the weekly. I think it mostly just, you know, it's a summary version of our monthly findings. It's really on the daily time frame where we have the most data to work with and also the most pertinent data. Specifically, you'll recall we were discussing at some length this daily range in BDC USD with the low at 16, the high at 17.6, and the midpoint at 16.7, 16.8. Uh, and we said that we'd have to make a determination uh, for the market uh, depending on the price action at these boundaries. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the market was quite clear in terms of its intentions. What we had uh, at the range high was basically a mirror image of what we had at the range low. So at the range low, you had a spike or a failed breakdown, close above the range, and you went from one boundary to the next. And now what you've had is basically the opposite of that, uh, just at the other side, where you spike the high, break back within the range, uh, and sort of move lower. Just like when the market failed the low, the target was the high, I think it's reasonable to posit that the market failed the high, uh, the target's probably going to be the low, probably. Um, I, I should make one other distinction. While I did say that it's a mirror type of setup in terms of its technicals, uh, I don't think it's a mirror setup in terms of directional bias. Because in a downtrend, uh, this was a sort of bullish pattern. So while that may not on its own be enough to be trend reversing, you can expect it's counter trend bounce. However, this failed breakout that happened at the range high, it's in line with the larger downtrend that we're in. So you kind of have to give this a bit more weight because not only is it kind of the same significant pattern of a failed breakout, but it's a failed breakout within a downtrend. So it kind of gives it a bit of extra boost. 
Uh, in terms of this week's price action, uh, I'm not terribly interested in doing business around the range midpoint. As you should know, don't diddle in the middle. Uh, for what it's worth, it's currently acting as resistance, so there's always that. Uh, the natural target for that is the range low. Uh, there may be a bit of a pit stop on, on an attempt at a higher low from this consolidation. I wouldn't rule that out, but in any case, this all just ends up being... Uh, range midpoint diddling in one form or another, so nothing going on there. Uh, if I wanted to be bullish this market based on this specific consolidation in front of us, I've already described where the higher time frame triggers would come, above 1920 or down at 1214, uh, kind of roughly speaking. In terms of this range, uh, what would look constructive? I think either a reclaim of 17.6, that would be really good. And the reason there is we've already had the nasty failed breakout attempt at the range high. It's quite rare that the market prints two of those. So it's, you know, if the market were to rally back and start finding acceptance at 17.6 or even just kind of start closing above it, it's much less likely that it's a second failed breakdown and another one of these. And much more likely that this is the kind of failed breakout attempt, excuse me, that this was the failed breakout attempt and the next time it tries and if, it, if it's accepted, that's more likely to be genuine. So double failed breaks are quite rare. So anything above 17.6 on the daily time frame, I think would look quite good and maybe give us a deeper retest of this um, sort of 18, 19K area. But that's the first thing above 17.6 for the reason stated would be attractive. Uh, at the range low, I'm, I'm, I'm less sure. I mean, maybe for a short term trade, there's some sort of bounce to be had off of this structure and below this swing low for some sort of spike trap, whatever. Uh, but I feel like the range low has done its job already, right? We've, we've had the setup at the range low. It gave a good bounce into the range high, through the high, kind of achieved its objective. And again, we're sort of in a kind of still a trending environment and I'm not terribly keen on rebuying levels of support in that type of environment unless I get a very good setup. Again, as you know, I'm always honest with you when it comes to uh, making week-long projections, which is quite difficult. I think if there's something really compelling at 16K, like maybe a big wipeout into a strong reclaim uh, or some sort of candle closed structure that I like, uh, it could still be puntable uh, simply from range low to range midpoint. I'm open-minded to that. But generally speaking, just in terms of you know my prevailing bias or what's on my mind, I take this failed breakout very seriously. So I'm going to need very serious and very strong reasons uh, to look to get long this market. So that's kind of my view on Bitcoin. And as I said, yeah, I'm, even if it reclaims the midpoint, not terribly interested unless it's above 17.6. Otherwise, uh, it's a failed breakout in a downtrend, guys. You know, that's that's not amazing. Uh, and failed breakouts in Bitcoin uh, usually have a lot of weight, at least in my system. Are we missing anything on the intraday? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, you could start adding some levels to this. You know, if you get some sort of intra-week rally, the first real resistance is this uh, little shelf that the market had. And I think this roughly aligns. I mean, it's not far from the range midpoint. Resistance, 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 breakout, small bounce, puke. So this is the deviation, this is the original level. So any rallies intra-week, uh, that's your kind of first trouble area, this, this, this spot here, broadly speaking. Uh, but again, not, not for me, not for my money. <laughs> um, as far as ETH goes, uh, the monthly time frame not as instructive as Bitcoin. It didn't close as a bearish engulfing. Um, and, you know, you could argue that it retested some monthly structure here. But again, I think the daily time frame carries the most signal. Uh, basically, not a whole lot going on. Uh, I think the most we can reasonably infer from the monthly is that if it continues puking, uh, your first pit stop has kind of got to be previous month's low. Um, so that that's kind of it, I think, in terms of what the monthly time frame can offer us. Uh, if we're looking at monthly closes, and again, jumping the gun a little bit, and we'll discuss this at length, I think any monthly closes below 1.1k, which is a level we've had for a while, uh, that would look really bad, I think. And at that point, the low itself, the, the lowest, the summer low becomes vulnerable, and the whole chart starts to look like a complete disaster, to be honest with you. So 1.1k is still an important pivot. As far as the weekly time frame goes, uh, I don't think a lot, I mean, look, we talked about weekly market structure uh, and how it, it was quite a straightforward pattern of lower highs and lower lows. I see no shift in behavior uh, from that at the moment. You know, if we look at this weekly, I mean, first of all, you kind of just eye test, draw a line through it. And that's that seems to hold up fairly well, but also just high, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Uh, and this would be a bit of a pathetic lower high, but at the moment there's no higher high made. So we have to take you know, take the trend at face value, that market structure is still bearish. Uh, in terms of technical levels, um, I'm kind of bored of looking at this type of clustery consolidation for any type of structure. Uh, I don't think it's particularly compelling. Um, most of my weight is going to be on the 
daily time frame. In terms of what we have, I mean, the market did push into this 1.3K underside, which we talked about last stream or the stream before that, whatever. It's certainly in technical roundup as our key weekly level, uh, and you have no acceptance above resistance there. So that's kind of where the market got stuck. Uh, resistance resisting. And I think even if the market, as we discussed, were to rally deeper, uh, it would have to contend with this 1400 level as a quite a reasonable tight area where a lower high might form. But it looks like it might not have the strength to even do that. In any case, um, resistance resisting on the weekly time frame and no shift in market structure. So uh, views there remain unperturbed. Now again, to the most relevant time frame, which I believe to be the daily. And again, you know, when I say and again a lot, whatever, it's one of my verbal ticks. When you have a contraction in volatility, a lot of the time, the higher time frames just won't be good enough to give you all the candles and data and ranges that you need. So you, you're forced to go to lower time frames. And sometimes that can be from the weekly to the daily, the daily to the four hour. It's a completely natural thing to do. You just have more, more structure, more data to work with. Um, I think this section could be quite short because it's essentially a mirror image of Bitcoin where you had an, you know, the range low market bounced there. Where did it bounce to? It bounced to the range high. What happened at the range high? Uh, it failed to break out there. So your natural uh, target is back to the range low from one extreme to the other with that same caveat that the failed breakout in a downtrend is much more powerful than a failed breakdown in a downtrend. Just like a failed breakdown in an uptrend is much more powerful than a failed breakout in an uptrend. God, I hope I got that right. I probably didn't. Uh, let me type that out just to be clear. Not all failed breaks are equal. The ones in tandem with trend are more powerful, i.e. failed breakout in downtrend is powerful because aligns with trend. Failed break down in uptrend is powerful because aligns with trend. And by definition, that means the other side of the equation is slightly less powerful. These are going to be your clearer signals. And that's kind of what we have across BTC and ETH. Um, so yeah, in terms of technicals, tried to break out, wasn't accepted, puked. Where did it puke to? Uh, it did puke through its range midpoint. So similar to Bitcoin, it's kind of an underside uh, retest type of area at this uh, 1,200 handle. Uh, and similar to, I mean, I mean look, it's, I'm not going to waste your time. It's a carbon copy of Bitcoin. I feel dodgy about the range low, especially with this double bottom resting here. If it were to reclaim the range midpoint, uh, there may be very short term bias to be played or whatever, but I, I wouldn't care about that. It's still too diddlesome. Uh, the earliest, the best way this daily range could resolve is in one of two ways. Either reclaim 1.3, because again, a double fake out is less likely, and I think anything above 1.3 that's accepted is likely to be the breakout from the range, or a double bottom wipe out here that gets reclaimed very aggressively or just absorbed uh, very violently in one form or another. So break out the range high, but for real this time, that's good. Wipe out the range low and give me something good at 1.1k, that's good. Um, and that, that will be a not a set and forget environment. I have to assess that. Uh, anything else is just range midpoint diddling for my money. Um, if what do we have on the daily time frame? Sorry, on the four hour, not a whole lot. You can kind of see this range midpoint was a really good level, and we're currently below it. So I mean, I guess if you're really short term trading, um, that that's your pivot for the week to give you some indication of are we going to push further towards some sort of lower higher resistance structure or come wipe down the range low. Um, but yeah, I think for me, the boundaries are the more attractive ones. Uh, if you're forced to trade this, I mean, uh, I hope you do well. <laughs> um, I'm not terribly interested in altcoins. I'm sure you'll forgive me for saying um, that there just isn't a lot going on there, uh, especially given the failed breakouts in BTC and ETH. I'm not looking for risk in these markets, certainly not on altcoins, because if I'm wrong, I'll be really, really wrong. So um, Perhaps we have to wait a couple of weeks to see if anything pukes to particularly crazy levels. I mean, in terms of updates, we talked about this sole level for the longest time. Uh, this just looks pukey, still looks like resistance. Um, Ape had some staking thing, but broadly speaking, you know, you had the big underside retest here, not much else going on. AVAX Uni, I, I don't care about these coins. So might need to jig up the watch list a little bit. Actually, leave a comment for altcoins you think I should include in my monitoring slash trading watch list. If, if you look at them yourselves, I think they've got good price action. Uh, let me know. As far as legacy markets go, um, no saviors there. And I actually sent out a tweet at some point where I basically said, legacy is below 3,900. Bitcoin and ETH are back inside their ranges. That's not good. I think that tweet was sent out actually 
And like, I'm not claiming clout for this. I didn't fucking trade the move. Uh, but it was roughly here. Um, and similar for BTC, I think it was in this consolidation. And, and so basically that was kind of the tone for risk is that all the important markets basically either failed to break out or lost their levels. And at the time of recording, all of that is still true. So at the very least, that needs to change for me to become excited. Uh, as far as the S&P goes, uh, this ended up being quite useful in terms of the Monday markets episode, because I think we have this monthly level here. Uh, let me see if I'm LARPing. Hold on. Let me open up my chart. Yeah, we did. So we had this monthly level here, uh, and the market, this is around FOMC. The market just rallied into it, um, you know, spiked above the high, and then just completely puked and vanished, and it's been puking ever since. Uh, so that's not good. I will go back to the monthly just for a quick second, and this is still looking like a downtrending structure in terms of lower highs and lower lows. So still no higher high has been made throughout the course of this thing, and it just looks like high, low, lower high, whatever, we're talking swing points, lower low, lower high, lower low, and this is technically a lower high, and so if the trend is going to continue, you'd expect the low to be vulnerable. Your best case scenario is that there is no lower low and we enter some form of consolidation based on this level here, which happens to be monthly support around 3700s or thereabouts, as we'll discuss, uh, but it's still a downtrending structure and it, it, it's worth being defensive, you know? Um, no clear evidence of reversal at the moment, uh, and also, I think the other reason for that, as we discussed at length, is that this 3,900 level was really important. Both on the weekly, you can see just about perfect candle closes all across the board. On the daily, even, just about perfect candle closes all across the board. And then on this day, it just puked and closed below. So, you know, if you're, making, if you're gonna make an S&P correlation, please save us type of argument, I think at the very least, you know, the minimum at which that becomes viable is a 3,900 reclaim. And then maybe we can talk about trading within this consolidation or backfilling some of this wick into resistance. But below 3,900, 3, uh, it's just very hard to make a bullish case. Uh, if there is a bullish case, where must it emerge? And I say must, because it's really the last level left. Uh, it is this monthly 3,710, 3,760 structure, which as you'll recall, was this mini cluster here. Market found support, failed breakdown, found support again and bounced. So your you know, m best case scenario, what has to be true uh, for this market not to look like a piece of shit. Again, 39 plus is fine. But if we do trade back the monthly structure, you can't have monthly closes uh, below this 3700 area. Uh, and actually the reasoning here is helpful because we discussed it with Bitcoin. We've already had a failed breakdown at this structure. Uh, and so if you if the market starts to close below it once again, then the probability of it being a second failed breakout or failed breakdown is low and the probability of continuation is high. So I think an, an important note, both for this month and next month is for there to be no acceptance below 3,700 if you have any semblance of risk on. Otherwise, it looks like a failed inverted head and shoulders or to its credit, one that played out into resistance and then trend continuation, the lows become vulnerable and we're back to dealing with this basically pre, you know, pandemic, crash, COVID, whatever price action. So um, a lot of important levels coming up and a lot of important closes and we'll get a sense of the yearly flows, I think, to some extent from that. Uh, for those of you kind of short-term trading or keeping an eye on S&P levels for those purposes, you can simply just use that as your range. 3,900 resistance, 3,710 to 3,760 support. Uh, generally, at the moment, the driving force is the breakdown from a very clear level. So that's worth bearing in mind and I don't cover the NASDAQ because I just think the S&P is better. That's all for me. Hopefully that was succinct. Succinct? Is that a word? I think I've just made that up. Hopefully that was concise enough to be helpful. I think that's a better word salad. Uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoy these. Um, comment on what altcoins I should add to my watch list or what you thought of the video in general. And subscribe to all the YouTube stuff. Go watch the Crypto Cred Spike Reversal or whatever it's called uh, video. I think it's fairly good and probably worth your time. If you enjoy this channel, you'll enjoy that video. Hope you all have had an excellent weekend and a hopefully a safe trading week ahead. Newsletter tomorrow, trletter.com, Wednesday stream, all the usual content stuff happening at Technical Roundup. So be sure to support us and we thank you for your attention throughout this year and next year and forever. You're trapped here. You can't leave. Bye-bye.